Hi, my name is Michelle and I'm a piano teacher. Today I wanted to talk about how to learn to play the piano. What kind of skills do you need in order to say that you are a pianist? Do you know there's actually an exam for that? There's something called the piano proficiency exam at just about every music school. And I'm going to talk about the requirements for that exam because if you know the sort of things that are expected to be able to say, you have passed a certain level of piano proficiency, I think it might give you a little bit of guidance in what you need to study and what kind of things are important, um, skills and techniques and things that will give you a good foundation for being a pianist. So, the piano proficiency exam primarily consists of scales, chords, and arpeggios. So you have to know, in order to say that you are a pianist, you have to know all of the major and minor scales. Four octaves. You have to be able to play 24 major and minor scales. That fast. I think the, the requirement is 60... Um, metronome set at 60 and you have to do um, 16th notes at 60 beats per minute um, and you have to be able to do that in C major C sharp major D major E flat major all of all of the major keys and all of the minor keys um, and then arpeggios and chords so arpeggios look like this And then a basic chord progression, something like that. In all the 24 keys. So you need to know your scales, your chords, your arpeggios. But there are some other skills that are really important to being a musician <clears throat> that I want to talk to you about. Transposition. Sight reading four-part harmony. So, what is transposing? Transposing is taking a song that you can play in one key and moving it to a different key. So, we'll use a simple example like Mary Had a Little Lamb. If I can play that in C major, I need to also be able to transpose that and play it in any other key. So, transposition would be, let's Let's just pick a random key. Let's say, let's play that in A flat major. So now instead of starting here, we're going to start here. Why would transposing be an important skill as a musician? There are two reasons, two main reasons, and one is vocal range. So if you are playing the piano for someone to sing, Sometimes you need to make it higher or lower to fit a limited range of, of vocal ability, right? So if you have a song that's in a higher range, but you have someone who has a lower voice, you might need to transpose it down lower so that they can sing the notes. Um, and then the other reason you need to understand transposition is because a lot of instruments transpose. The horn is in F, the clarinet is in B flat. There are several instruments that are not the same key as the piano, so you need to understand what transposition means and how you can change from one key to another. So transposing is uh, the fourth skill. Next, sight reading. Sight reading is probably what everybody thinks of when they think of learning how to play the piano. Sight reading is a being able to look at the notes on the page and play them. So it's just the basic skill of being able to read music fluently. You know, when you open a book and you see words on the page, you can just read it. Sight reading is the ability to do that with musical notation. So you know the language of music, you're able to fluently read it, you open up a book, and you just play it. 
So how do you get to be a good sight reader? My advice for sight reading is to play something new every single day. So just open any music, look at it, try to figure out what the notes mean and play it as best as you can. The next day, don't come back to that song, move on to something else. So each day you're looking at something new, that's how you become a good sight reader. It's just by practicing new music each day. Um, in our music school curriculums, we do have sight reading textbooks that have like four to eight bar phrases that are new for each day of practice. So that's something you could that, that exists. It's something that you can buy um, because they're textbooks, they're expensive. But um, I can remember having a sight singing book that we would we would do exercises in daily and it would be a new thing each day. So sight reading and then four part harmony. Um, the, mm, the main place where you can find four part harmony would be in a hymn book and they are written to have like a soprano, an alto, a tenor, and a bass line. There are four different voices and they move through chords in a very sort of um, careful way. And there are a lot of rules about four part harmony that if you want to study music, you would have to learn um, which way the voices have to move in order to resolve the chords properly. But it's, I think, a really valuable skill to be able to play four notes at the same time. So that would be usually two notes in the right hand, two notes in the left hand, and just being able to play uh, four part harmony is a skill that's on the piano proficiency exam. So those are the skills that I think are vital and essential for a pianist to learn if you want to become proficient at the instrument. And um, that is backed up by the Indiana University School of Music with their piano proficiency exam. So that um, just if you're trying to figure out exactly what skills you need to have or what kind of things you need to practice, I just recommend that you look into those six areas of music, scales, arpeggios, chords, sight reading, transposing, and four part harmony. If you want to learn these things, um, I will be doing piano lessons on each of these topics. And you can also check out all of my Suzuki piano lessons and some of my basic beginning piano lessons. And I love interacting with my audience. So if you ever have any questions or specific things that you'd like to learn or you want me to teach or talk about, please ask. Just say something in the comments and I will try and help you. Good luck on your piano adventures.